Okay, so starting off with a frog, doing a little bit more, decided I will finish it. So I've got the orange going there, just going to map out where a couple of these little lines go. So that's going to be a black area down here, a dark area, and the other one. So we've got a bit of a dark area there. And then by there, a bit of that blue. Maybe we're coming down your green. So just working out where that all goes. Eventually, we'll have another dark area down here. I think another one around about, around about in there. So. Well, I'm blocking in some of this colour on my um, Patreon channel. I've got a few members that, that are saying about they find they are kind of uh, putting off drawing. They really want to draw, or they really want to paint. They're putting it off, procrastinating basically. And in times like we're having now, I'm finding the same as well. I want to do it. I get up or I go to bed with all the intentions on, yep, tomorrow, 100%, I'm going to get on with this drawing or get on with this painting or, or whatever. And uh, get up in the morning, end up getting distracted, don't end up uh, drawing, start wasting time, beating myself up over it then. And we've got that bit of a vicious cycle uh, going on all the time. So you're not alone. It, this happens. But there, there's definitely a few things you can put into place. Because what members have said to me is that they get in. Let me just grab a different green a second. They tend to be. They feel like they're afraid to start a drawing or painting, piece of artwork. They are um, afraid that they're going to fail when they do it. Perhaps maybe afraid of ruining their supplies. If perhaps they paid a lot of money for some paper or pencils, or and they're afraid of messing things up. They're a bit afraid of disappointment, perhaps. That things perhaps won't turn out as they'd hoped they would. And sometimes they're even afraid, they can be afraid of actually success of it working out. Because then sometimes other responsibilities come along. All of a sudden, perhaps you are good enough to do perhaps pet portraits and, you know, making new decisions, new developments with your life. I'm just popping in roughly where these kind of creases are going. So we find then after you've got these, these uh, concerns going, or what I find, is that usually to get those bad feelings away you end up doing other things so you may think oh i've just about to start drawing a, um i'll go and get a drink first or i better get something to eat first and you make up all these other things to do or I'll go and tidy the sock drawer you know you, you do anything rather than feel um feel those feelings and it's weird because you know you want to draw or paint or it's not that big a deal really <clears throat> and by doing those other things you're pushing those feelings like down and we all feel it sometimes you know the thing is what you're rehearsing or you're going over in your mind those are the things if you keep doing it you get better at those so you're getting better at putting things off. Let's just put a few whites in, just to indicate uh, where those highlights are going to be a minute. 
and you don't particularly want to be getting better at um, putting things off like that. You don't be getting better at procrastinating. So I found there's a few things you can put into place that will give you the best chance of actually doing your artwork, doing what you want to do and perhaps getting a new habit going if that's what you really want. So <clears throat> I've got a few things that um, might work. So number one, I'm going to give a dark pencil a minute. Number one would be take the stress off yourself. So, you know, don't build up loads of stress now. Now's not the time, you know, we're going through these difficult times. Now's not the time to be thinking, right, I'm really going to do a massive project and uh, challenge myself unless that's what you want to do you know now may be the time for you but for most people now won't, will not be the time to be really uh, challenging yourself if you're feeling especially if you're feeling that you can't um, start a piece of artwork you're putting things off you know so if you've got those procrastinating things going on then it's definitely not a time to be doing something huge and challenging first you need to actually start doing anything so number one don't go doing massive projects got a bit of brown here locking that in making sure i know where this is all going so that's number one so number two then is to give yourself the absolute best chance of doing what you want to do the next day so if you want to draw and paint you need to give yourself the best chance to do that so get your paper ready or your paints ready get your brushes out get everything absolutely ready so all you've got to do when you get up and it's time to um, sit down and draw or paint it's all ready I don't you don't want anything that can give you the excuse whereas oh, I've got to go and get my brushes out or I've got to go and get the reference material or I've got to whatever get it all ready <clears throat> the yellow in there see I'm going really lightly just indicating where it is no details or anything yet Now a bit of yellow going up there and a bit more yellow then there. So next to follow on with that is reference photos can be a real sticking point for people as well. And what happens then is that people start hunting for reference photos on sites and they find one they think oh I really like that that's what I'm going to do got it and then they think oh I wonder if there's one a little bit better angle perhaps or a little bit better lighting or I wonder if there's a better one then they look for another one and then they're looking again and the next page and the next page and that's that kind of syndrome that you get when you're looking at social media and you keep clicking clicking going on to the next page onto the next whatever post and that's the same thing that's happening with the reference folder you put it off again so basically when you find one that you think I like it straight off you get that feeling I like it just pick it you're trying to build a new habit not to uh, do some doesn't everything hasn't got to be the best painting or drawing in the world let's just get started first so when you find one that's good enough so stop Otherwise, you're going to perpetuate those overwhelming, fe overwhelmed feelings again. Exactly what you don't want. So next then, if your motivation is low, for whatever reason, go small. 
you can still do art you can do it in 15 minutes I could do especially with pastels you haven't got to pull out paints or wash brushes or anything have everything set up if you've got a kitchen table or somewhere that if you can possibly leave your supplies out or the ones that you're using just leave those out that'll help a lot if you possibly can leave your stuff out so go small do little studies be a little bit of a you could just do an eye you could do a bit of try a bit of skin out do whatever don't make it complicated And especially if you've done a big project recently if you go big big all the time challenging all the time you feel like you burned out so after that that's when I like to do smaller things smaller studies that's the time when uh, I do those Now, if you're worried about ruining paper and things, then what I'd like to do then <clears throat> is to, I think it's a good idea to kind of like allow yourself one sheet at least out of it. So if you've got one of those kind of like 12 inch pads or whatever, a pastel mat, have one sheet of it and just cut, cut it out, pull it out. That's your testing piece. Okay, so anything, let's say I didn't know, I was unsure I was going to do this part on the frog, <clears throat> excuse me. Then what I could do is use our testing piece, you only need a little three inch square of it, and do that, you gain all the confidence then, so that you can, you know what to do. So you're not taking away a load of stress then, by having test pieces, and I test all my stuff really, very little that I've not at least done a little bit of a test on before I start and from one largest sheet like a 12 inch sheet as I said you can do loads and loads of different tests it's not like it's just going to wear out it's surprising how long those last and it's going to make a big difference because then you're not feeling like you're going to ruin your next uh, project So that's where you do your little studies and that'll help you <clears throat> if you're afraid to start. Now if you want it to become a habit, a good thing you can do then, <clears throat> I have actually got a frog in my throat, <clears throat> excuse me, is to try and attach it, what you want to do, to something that you like win anyway so you give yourself a little boost a little bit of a of a, um, endorphin rush so say you want you say and right I'm definitely gonna do 30 minutes drawing tomorrow morning after breakfast okay so once you've done it you may think okay after breakfast what I like then is to have a certain type of coffee after breakfast Okay, well what you'll do then is say, right, after I've done my drawing, that's when I'll treat myself to that special coffee or cake or whatever you want that's special. It could be just sitting down, listening to the birds, whatever. But you're doing your drawing first. Then after that, you do that thing you've been looking forward to. And that helps then to lock that new drawing habit over time into your uh, thing that you like doing as well so you look forward to it even more and you get this endorphin rush and that gives you that habit forming ability that locks in the habit easily so that's another thing you can do so I hope there's a few ideas in there that will help you stop uh, procrastinating and you know 
make yourself do it then at the start as well you know really go for it it's going to take a few days to get a habit going but uh, hopefully hopefully those few ideas will help you along